All right, so here we have an Atherin Blue Box SD40T-2 snoot nose. And I made this thing 30 years ago, back when I had to have everything Chicago and Northwestern. Well, it hasn't been used much. And so today what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, strip it all down, and probably update the wiring. Uh, we're going to fix it so that the trucks meet the standard to navigate rough track work. As you saw in the SDP40 video, that involves making a floating middle axle, and we're going to do that. And then we're going to give it a try. We might add some new lights and see if we can't bring this thing back to life. It does run. It, um, I haven't ran it for a long time, but it still works. Jerks a little bit, but... Got some good flywheel action. And we're gonna see what what we're gonna do. Alright, let's 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 break it on down. Alright, let's take this guy apart and see what we got. Uh, let's pick out a screwdriver here. Um, this one's got the two tabs on the side. Now being as old as this is, I don't want to break off these tabs. And I painted this thing by hand way back when. I primered it and then I used a brush. And I used scale coat green and yellow. And there we have it. The shell's in pretty good shape. And I always said I was not going to redo any of the shells. Back then, I bent these handrails on here and these grab irons. Uh, the handrails came with it, but the grab irons I put on myself and I bent them out of piano wire and a big pliers. That was hard work back then. We used to shave off the molded on grab irons and make new ones. And so this thing looks pretty good. On the windows, used to use um, some of that micro, micro saw micro scale window material it's like white glue and it does work pretty good it makes pretty decent windows um, I haven't used that in a while and looking at these windows that they've really they've kind of stood the test of time um, I might give that a try again all right so let's see what we got under the hood all right so I had higher hardwired this as you can see not only did I hardwire it but I used to have some stuff called slip plate which is a conductive graphite coating. And so what I did was where I soldered on here, I coated it in this slip plate graphite coating, which I don't have anymore. And uh, that prevents corrosion. And it looks like it did a really nice job. But altogether, uh, this thing really needs to be cleaned up nicely. And I think we're going to go ahead well, these wires are not stiff. Um, we're going to go ahead and isolate this motor so that we could do DCC, which we might do at a later date. We're going to clean up these gears. And I don't recall that the headlight worked. At least I didn't see a light. Um, let's check them out here. Couplers are screwed on. So they are... We don't really need to mess with those to the right height. Let's check it out here. Oh, the headlight does work. But we're going to go ahead and change that to LED. Um, just, just so you can see how to do it. Yeah, this thing has pretty much stood the test of time. Not bad. Not bad for, for not being used for 30 years. It wasn't a super reliable runner around the, uh, I was using 18 inch radius track, so it had, had some difficulty, it yanked cars off the track. So I didn't use it a lot, but boy, I can remember when this thing came out and how bad I wanted to get one. 
and I have a couple of them and I've got a rust bucket one that I have not touched yet either we'll do this one first and see how it turns out okay let's get this thing broke down first thing I want to do is I'm going to take my, my solder pencil here and I'm going to take off the wires um, they're probably going to be replaced anyways so let's go ahead and yeah, see I, what I did I used stiff wire for the headlight so that it would stay in place and what I did was I kept this front front light bracket here and that was my source of pow uh, negative power or the black side black wire power from the frame is right there and I don't usually do that anymore whenever you do these I put, a, I put a screw in but on this one there isn't a bunch of room under this hood to you know put a screw in and get our get our um, our power from the track I like to use red for the right side black for the left side this this light post here would be the black side and we're probably going to keep that and use that as our as our negative or black wire side let's go ahead and take off all these wires I'll tell you what that slip plate that I put on here did a really good job over the years of keeping the corrosion and the rust off here sometimes I open these up to find you know just looks like it's growing growing fur from the rust on some of these things um, that slip plate was a good product but I have not been able to find it for a while I had it in a spray I do have a graphite coating that is not conductive right now alright so there we got got the wires off um, we're going to take the linkage out these, univer these couplings they're not universal couplings these atherin couplings and we just we want to do get these out I'm going to start here at the front now I could take off this clip there we go and that lets me remove all of the coupling there and I'm going to take this one off the flywheel it's a little ball joint comes out there we go we got that now nice thing about these is the way they made these worm housing covers I can now just lift out the truck right there there's no more little hole these just sit flat on a spot under here um, this one is it's not too corroded we'll get that cleaned up let's go over here and do the same thing get off these worm housing covers pull out all, all of the couplings. There we go. Take truck off. All right. Oh, so now I notice on the bottom here, I use KD number four couplers on this. So I'm guessing I super glued these. Interesting. You don't see number fours too much these days. Um, they're a little bit more complex, and they're they got metal boxes metal draft gear so that's kind of interesting I would we'll probably drill this out and go ahead and put number five whisper couplers and see if they just break off yep they do so one thing about super glue you can go ahead and break off metal to metal all right now we got to get these motor the motor out now I can pull this apart um, but sometimes these motor mounts I gotten grease on them and you may have seen some that are hard as a rock and come apart in chunks. You may have seen some that are white and yellow. These are kind of rubbery ones. And I'll probably want to reuse these, but I'm going to have to wash them. Get them nice and cleaned up. All right, now we got our motor here. This is the regular old Atherin uh, standard motor of the... 
came out in the late 80s. It's looking pretty good. It feels good. It turns very smooth. But like you saw in that SDP40, we are going to put a pinhead's worth of oil on the bushings. We are going to take this clip and we are going to fix it so that it does not contact the frame on the inside. And we'll bring a wire up from here and connect it probably onto this front where the old light post was. And I cut off the part that had the light on it, but I kept the post. And we probably use this to, to get our, our, our other, other side of the rail powered, the negative side. All right, let's, let's go ahead and take this motor and hook it up to the bench tester here so we can get an idea what it sounds like. Okay. All right. Give it a little juice. Not bad, it's turning. Yeah, a little stall. Okay, I can hear a little squeaking. I can smell that it's old. It's been a while. So we're going to clean this guy up. Um, these motors, if they're in really, really bad shape, you can completely disassemble them if you need to. We don't need to do that here. What we need to do is get some lubricant onto the tiny thrust washer right here. We got to, we need it, we need a pinhead's worth of, of some of that uh, mystery oil that I got. We need a little, and we need the same thing over here. We need a pinhead's worth, and we don't want it to be spreading around, so we need just a tiny drop. That's all it takes on that shaft. Then we're going to do this. We're going we're going to clip this guy, put him on the anvil, and knock down these stubs so that they're flat. Then we are going to solder on a little black wire right here that we are going to use to connect to frame power. Now when we do DCC, we can undo the black wire, connect the, the uh, motor wire here. The black wire can go to the, con to the um, DCC uh, controller or the decoder and the red wire that that we usually have up here on top will go to the decoder and the decoder's wire will come to here and we'll just clean these up and this will give us a little polish and then we'll see what we got all right so here's what we got going on now I have cleaned up this motor tested it put my two little pinheads of oil onto the thrust washers run a very nice put a little brass on the fly, flywheels and on the bottom as you can see I have cut off the two tabs and I've hammered them flat that's going to be important okay next what I got here is I took in the bottom of the underframe I put some electrical tape right where that made contact this is to insulate the motor from the frame. That's what you have to do in DCC, is to insulate the motor from the frame. Okay, now, I said I was going to think about some lights here. And to do lights, what I've got here, you can see, I've got some LEDs wired in a ring here, connected to one of these guys. This is a bridge rectifier. What it does, is it takes you connect your red and black wires here and here and then on the top here it's marked plus and minus no matter what comes into it it will output plus and minus exactly on these two leads that way you can wire things up like LEDs and even if you reverse direction it will stay 
it will stay the same way for your LEDs so that you don't you don't want to reverse the power on them because it'll burn some of them out. Um, that's what I always do that. Some people don't do that, but that's how I do it. Um, so what I have made, I made this thing I call a test ring. And it's got one bridge rectifier on it. I've got it connected to the power right now. And off the plus side, I made this so I remember how to do this. Coming off the plus, I've got my 1K resistor. And this little ring reminds me that the gold stripe on the resistor is away. Um, that's so that I remember which way the resistor goes. Now that I can look at the LEDs and I can see the inside of them to find out exactly which way they go. As you know, when you look inside an LED, they have a little small, they have a small lead coming in and then they've got this big spade going out. You want to get them oriented in the right direction. This helps me helps me remember which way the LEDs go and they go around the circle and back into back into the rectifier. That gets them right. So I'm probably gonna I'm gonna try I've got some little bright yellow LEDs and there ain't a lot of room under this hood but we're gonna try putting in an LED headlight and we'll think about putting in one for the rear. But on the SD40 T-2 there ain't a whole lot of places that light up. I could put one up in the cab but if I remember right I painted these number boards white then I put a black ring around them and then I individually cut numbers and put them in there so it's not even with a light behind it it's not going to light up a lot but there is a little headlight here we might be able to light that thing up I mean it's looking a little frosted over over the years but we'll give it a try see what we got and then on the bottom of the motor on this clip side that covers the spring, I have tinned. I have tinned a spot on the motor right here where I'm going to connect my black wire. All right, let's go ahead and I've got my 1K resistor, my bridge rectifier, some LEDs, some wire. Let's go ahead and put and and connect these together and see what we got. Alright, so I checked some LEDs with this shell, and the lights in here are just too frosted over and too small. It, even with my brightest LED, they don't light anything up. So we're going to skip that on this one. Maybe we'll add that in when we do this U25C we've got over here, which has a ton of cab space in it. And we'll, we'll give that LED a try again later. Right now, let's go ahead, get the motor in here with the black wire, and get it ready to put back together. All right, well, one of the things we're gonna to do today, remember when we took off those number four couplers because they were super glued on there? That's how I used to do it because I didn't have this machine. This is a drill press I got at Harbor Freight. It was like 60 bucks. And I got this XY table at Harbor Freight. It was like 70 bucks. And I use it all the time. It's not super accurate. It's not a great milling machine, but I'll tell you what, it comes in handy for stuff like this. This is the frame door SD40 T-2. And as long as we got it stripped down, let's go ahead and put some holes in here so that we can actually screw in some KD number five couplers in their draft gearbox. So one of the things I have is this KD number 246 tap and drill set. Okay, so it has a tap, which makes screw threads in a hole. It has a tap drill which is a number 50, which is larger than a 1 16th, but smaller than a 5 64th. Then there's a clearance drill. If you want the hole to go all the way through, you use the clearance drill at number 43. Um, what I want to do is I want to, I want to put a hole in here that I can screw into. But I'm not going to use the bits from that number 246 kit until I have gone through with a 1 16th drill bit because I don't want to break my tap and drill set that I've got for KD couplers. So I'm going to put a pilot hole in here with this 1 16th before I use my number 50 drill. So we're going to give this a try and 
show you how it's done here. Now I've got I've got plenty of 1 16th bits, and I expect we might break one or two of them. Hope not, but it could happen. Let's let's see what we got here. So first, get it lined up. So this is what I like about this is I'm going to crank it in here, and I just you know I bolted this down on my workbench. There's already a kind of a starter hole there for the couplers. I want to get mine to line up just right in that hole, and this XY table is is good enough to do that. All right, so I'm I'm right on there. Let's and I've got this thing on the lowest possible speed there is. Holy, that's bent drill bit. Okay, that's that's we can't have that. Let's check this thing out. I just took this out of the package. It should not be bent. So it could be that it is mounted in here wrong. Let's try that again. See if we can get this thing. We can't have wobbling around like that. From here, it kind of looks bent. Oh, no, it's pretty good. Okay, let's make sure it's tightened up good. All right. I tightened a couple of holes on this, so it should be all right. Let's try it again. Okay, let's bring it down. Right, I'm gonna line it up. I'm gonna line it up with it off again. Get it lined up. Oh, we are at the we're at the end of this thing. Can we go any farther? Okay. Oh, we're gonna be right on, barely. All right. A bunch of you asked me why do I have all those nuts lined up against the mirrors on my workbench. I use these nuts for everything. In this case, I put two nuts underneath this frame to hold it up into the jaws, and I don't want to break off these mounting tabs here for the shell. So I only got a little room to work with, so I put two nuts under there, and it gives it, it can sit down on the nuts, can hold it in the jaw, and it should give us a stable surface. I don't want to put a ton of pressure on this. Alright, there, there we go. If I put too much pressure on this, it will not be square. All right, so that's drilling pretty nice, and looks like we got it. That was pretty easy. It's pretty easy. Let's take our paintbrush here and take that. All right, so we got a pilot hole in there. Now let's take our... Let's take our number 50 bit, of which we only have one. Take this 50 bit, and this will make our 256 hole. You know, some of you are wondering, what's a 256? It's a screw, and it is a screw that is used in so many different things in model trains um, that you should always have a bunch of them on hand. And they're really cheap to get. You get them if you're lucky and you've got a place that uh, that has loose screws, sometimes sometimes they'll have brass 256 screws. Uh, there's a local hardware place that I know that, that once in a while, and I bought a huge, I bought like a lifetime supply of brass ones. But otherwise, I've ordered them online, got them on eBay. They're like two bucks for a hundred. So let's give this a try. Very nice. That 1 16th is really close to this thing. Okay, so let's get a 256 screw and get ready to tap. All right, it's tapping time. Now, we got our hole drill. I put the tap into a pin vise. Now, let me give you a warning. Do not put your tap into your drill press or a hand drill or anything like that. Ask me how I know. You want to break it? That's how you do it. The first thing that will happen is this will dig in there, and it will the drill press will make it climb up there, and it will rip it off, and it will break everything. And you have, probably have a piece of your tap stuck in the hole, and then you, you you're going to be trying to figure out how to get it out of there. So to do this, you just put the tap in there, start twisting it. You reach some resistance, go back and forth, keep on going back and forth, back and forth. 
that's how you do it. You just go back and forth with it. And it takes a little bit of time. It's not terrible. Back and forth, back and forth. We got a nice, we have a nice clean hole there. So let's take it out. I bet we got it. Okay, now I'm going to take, I've got a 256 screw right here. This is the screw. I will actually screw the coupler to the frame. So I have a frame mounted, body mounted coupler. Yeah, and there goes the screw in, and it's already in far enough so that I know I now have a good mounting point for my couplers. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? All right, I'll do the other side, and then we'll get back to work. All right, so we got our frame here, and we got our holes drilled, and now we have some tapped 250, 2-56 screws each and later we will body mount couplers and usually these things are almost right on if they're not right on we can use a washer these screws are tapped so we can screw them in and unscrew them to um, adjust with washers and then if you remember we got our tape in there to isolate the motor okay now here comes the tricky part this is where a lot of people get in trouble Here's the trucks. These trucks can get broken apart by a fool with a big screwdriver. So let's find our little screwdriver right here. Now on these trucks they are held together with a clip here and a clip here. We're going to take those off. I'm going to show you how. The side frames pull off. Just gently pull the side frames off and they come off just like that. Hopefully I did not glue this on here. I'm going to take a little bit, give it a little nudge in the back here. We don't want to break anything. There we go. Comes out. Got it out. All right, side frame's off. Now, get the gears out. You take your little screwdriver. Come in from the side underneath these clips. If you come in from the back right here, you will break this clip apart. Don't do it. Go in from the side. Don't stab yourself. Go in from the side just like that. And see, I got it. It's off, and I didn't break it. But that's a pretty good thing. All right, got one. Now there's another one on the side. We'll come in from the side. Give it a little bit. There we go. Snap. And there it is. Try not to lose it. Now here's the tough one. There's one on the bottom. This one. And I have seen people, and I've done this myself, they came in this way and snapped the thing apart. Don't do that. What you do is you take your little screwdriver and you go down the side. See where it's clipped on? A little, little cutout right there. Go down the side next to it and try to push it out from the side. Okay, just a little bit. That one's out. See if I can get the other one out without putting this one back on. Okay, that one's out, and I got it. It came off in one piece, and I didn't break it. That's pretty important. Wheel sets come out, and comes apart just like that. There's our gears. Okay, on the gears, all these are the same size, so you don't nearly need to remember how to put them back in. You've got the big idler right here, and then you've got all these drive gears. You can wash them, and as you can see on this one, I never lubricated this, and I don't know why. It may be because I never, I never took this part down this far. These gears are totally dry. What I did do, though, as I can see here, way back when, it was like 30 years ago I got this, um, I did take the graphite, and I did coat part of side frame so it would, wouldn't uh, when you looked at it from the side you wouldn't see silver so that was pretty good now these wheel sets these are the kinds that have these little pickup nuts on them and later I'm going to show you a little trick we can do with these 
and it'll help us out. These wheels are pretty dirty. And in fact, they're dirty enough. I'm going to do something. I'm going to take the moto tool and I'm going to clean the tops of the wheels. I already painted the ends of them. And on these, the pickup comes from that little nut right there. So you can actually paint the whole ends of these. And I'm going to try to clean this now. These clean up pretty nice, but they tend not to stay totally clean for a long time. But they're really easy to clean. So yeah, that one shined up pretty good. Alright, so now I'm going to clean all these wheels. And then we'll get move on to the next step. Alright, we got our wheel sets cleaned up. They're looking pretty good. I'm going to clean up one more thing. Now, years ago when I coated this thing with slip plate, spray on graphite, that really did an excellent job of keeping corrosion and rust off this. So I'm not really going to mess with it because it's really doing its job. Now, this part here is where you get pickup from the rails to the frame. I'm going to go ahead and polish this. We might go ahead and solder in a wire for extra pickup. That's probably what we're going to do. But in the meantime, since we're going to isolate this motor, I'm going to get this thing polished up a little bit. And then, there we go, that one's pretty nice. Do this other one. Now you see I'm using the wire cup on my Moto tool. I'm using a wire cup. That's pretty good. I'm going to show you something else though. Here is another one that a lot of people like to use. It's got a copper shaft. See that one? Do not use this one. This one here will rip apart any of your metal stuff. It will take the coatings off wheels. Any of the new newer wheels that are plated this will rip the coating right off and, and take it straight down to whatever it's made out of brass or bronze or something don't use this guy on anything like this this thing is for heavy duty this will strip metal don't use it resist the urge to use this thing okay that being said let's see what else we gotta do here all right, so what we've got, what we got going on is all these guys are ready. Okay, so what we're, we're thinking about going ahead and adding a wire to this so we get direct pickup. So we don't have to depend on the contact right here. We're going to go ahead and clean that contact. This is where the trucks contact the frame, and this is our black wire power. Okay, so that the contacts are cleaned up. All right, so, oh yes, let's take a look at this. This is the official National Model Railroad Association standards gauge. This is something that should be in your toolbox. Um, it does. It measures a lot of things, and for for this for this uh, rebuild right here, we're going to use the wheel set setting. Um, there's two notches here and you put your wheels in there to see if they're engaged and guess what? They're not engaged. Now this this type of locomotive with these kinds of trucks, they are notorious for being out of gauge. And they're really easy to go out of gauge. So you gotta check them. And if they're too slippery, like this one might be, in fact this one may be kind of wobbly, um, I use white glue, like Elmer's glue or tacky glue, and that holds them. And then, then later, when I go, when I have to overhaul this again, change my mind, the tacky glue is not so hard that I can't get it out, and I can take, clean it off. So that one's checked. Let's 
check this one. Here's another one, not engaged. There's quite the gap in there. There's a, there is quite a gap in there to get this thing in the gauge. And it's hard to see if it's gonna stay engaged. Roll this around here, it's not. In, these wheels are very touchy. We might just go ahead and white glue these, or a little tacky glue. Um, you could use shoe goo, which I really love because it's so easy to change your mind with, but in this tiny application, shoe goo is not so great. It's harder to work with. So there's probably really no point in me setting all these since I'm going to take them off and we're going to put a little tacky glue in there get them all in the gauge. Yeah, and all of them, every single one of them was out of gauge. And that is kind of a problem on these kind. Um, as you can see here, the wheel sets, they just come right off and they slip off. Now here's the other thing. I bought and used locomotives with this type of truck arrangement in them and guys have put Lord knows what kind of lubricant on them, and this axle will crack. Now, it will crack the long way. So like, like our fix for the Bachman locomotives, we can repair that using some baking soda and super glue. That's usually a good fix. We do not want, don't super glue your wheels in here because ultimately they will still go out of gauge later, and you have to check them later. You should be having a, an overhaul program for your locomotive fleet so that each one of them gets broke down, you know, every few years. That's a good, that's a good practice to get into. All right, so what we want to do now is I'm going to put one of these together, I'm going to grease it up, and I'm going to solder on a, a lead to it, and then I'll show you on the second one. All right, we got the last one gauged here, and now we're going to go, we're on the last one gauge. And we're using some tacky glue. Okay, so here we go. This is how you do it. Pull the wheel set off. Don't lose the nut. Take your tacky glue or your Elmer's glue and put a drop on the end of it here. All right. Put it in there. And guess what? If you screw this up, oh, this one's cracked. Well, that's got, that's got a really good crack in it. Um, this glue will help that though. If you see, if you screw this up with this glue, this glue is forgiving because later you can take it out and you can just pull the glue out. Okay, then we're going to rotate it all the way around the gauge here. Make sure it's totally engaged. There we go. Got our wheel sets ready. All right. So we're getting pretty close here. Let's go ahead and I'm going to put one of these trucks together and then we'll demonstrate on the second one. Alright, before we go any farther, what we want to do is, when we're putting this back together, we want to make sure we get it back together in the right way. So, I've got another tunnel motor, of course, among many more. This is my Falcon Service tunnel motor. I made this about 30 years ago. Yep. Back then, I made everything CNW. I've got some. I've got two DD40s I made CNW. But I'm going to take this one apart. Not apart. I'm just going to take the shell off, if we can. And I want to use it so that we can compare the direction the trucks are facing. Now, let's see if I can get this off without breaking it. I think I can. Look, this guy's on here pretty good. Let's see if we can see which way this guy comes off. All right, give me a second. All right, so I got it off. Man, I did some wiring in here. There's a bunch of lights in here that I forgot about, and but anyways. I'm going to use this. We know that when it's facing forward, these little platforms with the red wires attached to 
will be, as facing forward, they will be on the right side, the engineer side. Okay, that's all we really need to know is those little arms, which will, I'll show you again. They need to be engineer side. You know what we should do is let's find out if this thing runs. Let's put them on the track here and see if he can be fired up for the first time and probably. I don't even remember when. It's been many years. Decades, probably. See what if he's got any juice in him. Yeah, he does. Yep. Go oh, and the couplers work over my magnet. Now if you see right here, I've got a I've got a KD magnet under track here, and I use that to test my couplers. I make my couplers so that they open at the magnet. And I do not cut off these little wires on the bottom. I bend them so that they match up to one of these KD height gauges, which you should also have in your toolbox. Oh, I sm this one. Nope, oh, that one's right. Okay. So when they come in, they should line up. Now this one needs to have a little bend put in with the pliers. Very carefully, take a pliers, and you get the top of the wire and the bottom of the wire. Get it in your jaw there. Give them just a tiny bend. There. Let's see if that made a difference. Still opens and yep, it goes right onto. There's a little tiny lip down here on this thing. That is to set your your, your uncoupling pins to the right height. It should go right over the top of that, and it does. And he will hook up just like that. I got this, these new plastic ones so they don't short the track. Alright, let's put that guy over here. Get him out of the way. Alright. Oh, let's back up a little bit. Uh, I am somewhat amazed that this thing runs after all this time. But on the other hand, these old Atherin blue boxes, man, they surprise you. They will surprise you at how durable and long-lasting they are. That's why they're so popular. All right, let's get back to business here. I'm going to wire up this truck for you. All right, it has occurred to me that we forgot to do something. The thing we forgot to do was we were going to make the middle axle a floating axle. And the reason for that is... We do not ever want the locomotive to rest fully on three points of contact, on three axles, when crossing switches. We want it on two points of contact. If you're on three, one will skid always. So you want two. So what we're going to do is this thing has these, these metal side frames on here that the trucks, these little nuts fit in. That's how they get their power. What we're going to do is we're going to make it so that these side frames, these little spots right here, are deeper than the other ones. And to do that, I'm going to use the fiberglass cutoff wheel on my moto tool. Very carefully, I'm going to grind out just a little bit right here so that my truck goes up and down a bit. It'll still rub the sides. It'll still get, still get power. Not a problem. Let's carefully do this. Alright, let's check it. 
Now this is an old secret of days gone by. People have totally forgotten about doing this. You do this on your modern locomotives. You got, you got your special locomotive that you um, really like, and it's got got six axles. Now we have got some some headspace just above this nut, so that this one is going to get a little bit of wobble to it. What's going to happen is when it goes over a rough track, it's going to float up and down. Still touches, still brings power. There is another way. If we're not getting enough power. There is another way to, to add extra pickup using this bronze phosphor wire from Tai Chi, number 1106. Um, you can use that. You can solder it to the sides to where it brushes the top of these nuts. Um, we're going to try doing it without that, but if we need to, we'll solder that on there. Okay, let's do the other one. Let's do our mate here. Now if you're wondering, my moto tool is set on the lowest speed. Don't go overboard with this and cut your side frames in half. That would be bad. We don't want to do that. Ooh, now we got we got ourselves basically an all-terrain locomotive. This sucker will go over the roughest track with ease now. Let me get this guy in there. Yes, that is what we like. Yeah, very nice, very nice, very nice. Hey, you know what, we were messing around with these. We better check to make sure we didn't take them out of gauge. That would be bad. Good to go. Good to go. All right. Now, for like 10th time, I've told you I'm going to put this thing together. And I'm going to solder a little wire on here. 